Straight all day. Straight all day. Ball overseas, the overseas basketball blueprint. Let's talk about the win-lose situation you're stepping into when you play professional basketball, especially when you're trying to play ball overseas. As I've talked about before, and something that I think you probably have a basic understanding of is when you play professional basketball or you play any basketball in the hierarchy of the game, the traditional structure hierarchy, meaning going from playing in the street, then playing at your school and scholastically, whether high, middle school, high school, or college, then playing professionally is that uh, is always a competition. It's a direct one-to-one -one competition, meaning your team against the other team at the end of that game, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. All right, this is not hockey. This is not soccer. This is not boxing. It's impossible for there to be a tie or a draw in a basketball game. Basketball games keep going until somebody wins. All right, that part you understand. I want you to understand that's the, the macro look of it, but in the micro, understand that you're also in a win-lose situation, and I'm going to explain to you with three specific points exactly what this means. The first thing you need to understand is that basketball is a zero-sum game, both the game itself and the game within the game, meaning when the Lakers play against the Clippers, one team's going to win and one team's going to lose, right? When the NCAA tournament happens every game, there's a winner who moves on, there's a loser who gets eliminated from the tournament. We all understand that part of basketball, but I also want you to understand the game within the game is that for you to get a job playing pro basketball overseas, that means somebody else is not getting a job. When you get hired to play for a team, if a team in Portugal signs you to a contract, I guarantee you, you were not the only player they were considering signing. All right, they were looking at maybe three or four players, maybe 20 or 30 players, and they decided to sign you for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of where you went to school. Maybe it's because of your stats the previous season. Maybe it's because of your size. Maybe it's because they liked your highlight tape. Maybe because your agent pulled some strings and made it happen. Maybe you got, maybe one of the guys already on the team is, he knows you or she knows you and help you get the job. Whatever the reason is, understand that every job that any player gets is the job that somebody else ain't getting. Again, being a pro basketball player is not like being an Instagram influencer or a YouTuber and that just because you got yours doesn't mean nobody else can get theirs. Yes, it does mean that. In pro basketball, when you get a job, that means there is one less job available for the other 10,000 players who are trying to get on at the same time as you. And you need to embrace this fact and I'm going to explain to you why as we move on to point number two. Again, what we're talking about here, for those of you who don't remember what I said at the beginning, is that this is a win-lose situation. This is a zero-sum game when you're playing pass basketball overseas. Here's the second point. Everybody ain't making it. And I'm pausing there for emphasis so you can really let that sink in. Everybody is not going to make it. All right? I was speaking to a basketball agent uh, not too long ago, and he said to me, look, you know, I, anytime a player reaches out to me and asks me for help or asks me for information, I tell them whatever I can tell them. But the bottom line, Dre, 99% right, of these guys ain't making it. 99% of these guys are not going to get a job overseas. Now, I don't know who exactly he's hearing from or who he's talking to. I know a lot of players who reach out to me are players who actually can play. I got players who play D1 reaching out to me, players who are already overseas reaching out. So maybe he's speaking to a different sample size or a different you know, selection of ball players out there. But the point is this, out of all the players who play ball and talk about playing at the pro level, whether you're talking about the NBA G League overseas, 99 out of 100 of them ain't going to make it. He was absolutely right. There's actually 999 out of 1,000 of them ain't going to make it. And what does that mean to you? Let me explain to you what this means. If you're a ball player right now, let's say you're playing in school or you're playing in the street or you're playing in the, the Equinox or the LA Fitness or Lifetime, wherever you play ball. The people that you play with every day, the people that you work out with every day, your teammates from school, all, right, all of them are not going to make it. Maybe you'll be the one who does and all the rest of them won't. Maybe one of them will make it and you might not. Now, I'm not wishing that upon you, but I am telling you that to tell you this. There are going to be some times in your journey as a basketball player, especially becoming a pro and remaining a pro, you're going to have to make some decisions for yourself when the rest of the group is not there to make that decision with you or the rest of the group is just not on the same page as you as far as doing what you want to do. You might go to an exposure camp in June and that camp is whatever that camp is and maybe you feel like you got some, some opportunity out of it, but then you're like, no, I'm going to go to another one in July and your three college teammates who are rolling with you on this, they said they want to play overseas too. They don't want to go to the camp in July. They want to go on vacation. Uh, they want to go to the beach. Or they don't want to spend their money on that. They don't want to invest in that thing. And you make that investment because you're like, yo, I'm a little bit more serious about this. Or maybe one of them does it and you don't make the investment. But the point is this. 
at some point in your journey as a professional basketball player, especially playing ball overseas, playing in the G League, playing in the NBA, you're going to find yourself by yourself. Or you're going to find yourself by yourself in the gym. You're going to be by yourself on that plane. You're going to be by yourself in that apartment. You're going to be by yourself um, working out, hiring an agent, by yourself hiring a trainer, by yourself going to bed early, waking up early, getting to the gym when it opens instead of getting there three hours later. You are going to be by yourself. Everybody's not going to make it. Everybody's not going to do the same things that you do. And this is uh, getting to the pro level at anything in life. For the most part, I'm going to keep it real with you. It is not a group effort. It's a solo job. So I know they say, you know, it's lonely. Some people say it's lonely at the top. I know Drake and in one of his songs, he says, trust me at the top. It's not lonely. Listen, it's not lonely at the top, but the journey from where you may be right now to the top, that can be lonely. I heard because everybody ain't going to come with you. Now, once you get up there, there's going to be plenty of other people up there. You're going to make some new friends when you get to that spot. But when you're wherever you're at now and you're trying to get up there, between here and there, most of the people you have with you down here ain't going to be with you by the time you get up here. Right, that's just what it is. Maybe some of them will be up there, too, and you'll meet them up there, but they're going to have to take a different route than what you took. They're not going to do everything exactly the same. It doesn't happen like that in life. If you're going to go up, you're going to have to take, you're going to have to take some solo trips. If you understand what I'm saying. So that's what I mean when I say this is a zero sum game. And the third thing I want you to understand here, when we're talking about a win, the win lose setup of basketball and this being a zero sum game, is that uh, you got to be willing to chop some heads off to be successful. And when I say chop some heads off, I don't mean literally. Don't go out there and kill anybody. You probably end up going to jail for that. What I mean is, you're going to have to go up against somebody who maybe you know them, maybe you're cool with them. Maybe you went to school with them. Maybe you played against them. Maybe they're from your same conference, but they're at your same position, and they want the same job that you want. You might show up at a tryout for an overseas team. They offered you a two-week tryout. You get there, and you see three other guys who are also import players who are the same size as you, same position as you. you get, you're get a point guard. You talk to them. You ask them what position you play. They're like, point guard? What position you play? Point guard? Oh, they're not signing three point guards all from the USA at the same time. They sign in one point guard. And it might not even be one of y'all. They don't like none of y'all. They'll get rid of all y'all, bring three more players in the next week. That's the way the game goes. And you got to be willing to chop their heads off in order to get your job. It ain't always going to be friendly. It ain't always going to be buddy-buddy. Everybody ain't going to be able to do everything at the exact same time. But this is the game you signed up for. All right, this is the business that you're in. In this business, there's a winner. Every game in basketball, you know this. There's a winner and there is a loser. Every career that starts... There's a career that ends. For every player that gets on, they're like, I finally got on, I'm in. There's another player who says, I'm not going to get on. You know, I'm about to go get me a regular job because this basketball thing ain't working out. This is the game you signed up for. And I just want you to you know, save this, download this, whatever you got to do with this material to make sure that you have this on your mind at all times. You got to be willing to you know, do what you got to do to hold down your position all right that's what that's what politics is if you look up the definition of politics it means taking actions to advance or protect your own personal interests all right you got to play the politics game politics is not just about talking to people and being cool with people and shaking hands politics is also what you do out there on that court because you might have to you might have to go at your teammate or your man at an exposure camp or at a tryout your friend so you can get the job instead of them getting the job and that's what it is if you don't want to have to do that, you can get out of this game. All right, this is a voluntary game. You ain't got to be in it. So let me recap what I'm talking about here. This being a zero-sum game of you know, the world of basketball is that being a zero-sum game means somebody got to win and somebody got to lose. Every single game of basketball, you already understand that. Understand that that works not only in a larger game like the Knicks against the Suns, but also the smaller game, you against another player for a job. Number two, everybody ain't going to make it. All right, understand it. it you can't bring everybody with you on this journey and everybody can't bring you with them. A lot of this is going to be a solo job. You're going to find yourself by yourself many times in your path. And when you get to the top, there's going to be other people there. If you're at the bottom right now, there's a bunch of other people there. But between there and where you're trying to go, you're going to be by yourself often. You need to get used to that and be ready for that. And number three, sometimes you got to be willing to chop heads off to win. You got to be willing to chop heads off to be successful. And if you're not willing to do that, this is not the game for you. Sports is a competition. 
great thing about sports is it is a meritocracy, meaning the best performer usually ends up winning, getting the trophy, getting the money, getting the recognition. Right, it's hard to be great in sports and just be completely ignored because there's a scoreboard every single game, every single match that says exactly what happened as opposed to the, in the business world where you could be great and people may still, for whatever reason, not recognize you. In the sports world, if you're good, you're good. And that's just the way it works. All right, you ain't got any, no politics can stop somebody who's great. All right, no, poli- no amount of politics can stop LeBron from being LeBron. And if you're a good player and you deserve to be at the pro level, no amount of politics can stop you from getting on the court at an exposure camp and showing your game. No amount of politics can block a great game film or highlight video that shows you're a player who can play at the pro level. All right, no amount of politics or hating can stop that. That's the great thing about the sports world. So if you're in this game, I want you to understand every element of this game. That's what you got in. That's what you're going to be in. If you have not yet gotten your copy of the Overseas Basketball Blueprint, my 237-page book, it tells you everything you need to know to start your professional basketball career overseas. Even if you don't know anything, go to balloverseas.com. The link is right down below. The book is free. You cover the shipping. It's at balloverseas.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.